Hi there, my name is Steve Knutson. I'm a Microsoft MVP for Office Services and Apps. Um, over the last week or so, I've been asked quite a lot of times uh, to talk about the basics of SharePoint sites, and it sort of reminded me that there aren't many videos out there at the moment um, explaining what a team site is and the basic structure and functionality of a team site. So I thought I'll do a quick video to show some of the highlights. So what you're seeing on the screen in front of me at the moment is a uh, modern SharePoint online team site. So this is created by going into the admin portal, the SharePoint admin portal, and then creating a new site using the Teams team, team site template. Out of the box, you get a bunch of web parts on the screen here, uh, quick links, news, um, and activity within the site. You get some default document libraries down the side down here, and you also get this part here for turning the site into a Microsoft team. So that means uh, you're starting from the SharePoint site and then adding teams on top of the site. Uh, teams will use the SharePoint site's default document library to store documents uh, in the various channels within that team, and we'll demonstrate that later in the demo. So let's just have a quick starting uh, starting look. Um, we have our document library here. If we've got documents, you'll see uh, in this document library, when it opens, uh, our default um, set of documents. And in here, we can do things like create a new document um, based on one of the default templates. Now, this is customizable. We can add things like content types and so on. Uh, to uh, link templates and so on to the various documents using the add template part down here or through the content type method as we've done in old versions of SharePoint. We can also upload files um, or, or folders this way um, or we can just do a drag and drop so you can actually drag and drop files into the folder uh, to pull some documents in, in here. Now one of the really interesting things here is if I just go and drag a couple of files up just to um, Oops, test folder maybe. Uh, in test I've got a bunch of files in here so I'll grab a test document and I can upload those into the library. And you'll see that when I upload those it's got the modified uh, by date and name here. Now if you are bulk loading content in you can use the SharePoint migration tool. Uh, I have another video which explains how to use the tool for uploading the files and when you use the migration tool rather than having the current date and time and author it will grab the details from the document uh, from the folder on your file server um, or if you bring it from an old SharePoint site it will bring across um, the, uh, the same modified and created by dates and so on from that from that server. Now I've got the uh, files in here I can quickly add in a um, add in a column type so let's just add a choice in here so we'll, uh, we'll make our choice um, something like uh, status and we'll give those documents a status of um, uh, draft um, approved archived and we can set the default value in this case I'm going to have the set of default value as none and choose save. So now I've created this column you'll see it's got no values in it because I haven't made the field compulsory and also I haven't dragged the files uh, I haven't dragged the files in so what I can use is this quick edit option choose quick edit this allows me to bulk edit my documents and what I want to do is actually in this case, I'm going to make most of the documents approved. And then just exit quick edit, and you'll see that I've now got an approved column on the library. Now the other way I could have done that was actually by using a um, uh, by using the, pr the properties on the item for a single value. That's interesting, it's not going to exit out for me. I'm just going to click documents on the side and you'll see the metadata is actually applied for some reason my screen's not saving. Um, if I then uh, exit out of here now, hopefully, there we go. Um, if I now exit out of this file and I wanted to just change a single file, the easiest way is to use this information tab on the side here. Using that information tab I can scroll down here and change the status to archived for that item close and you'll see its status has changed to archive on the screen here. Now what I can also do is I can filter. So I can filter by on here and say me show just approved items. And when I do that you'll notice a couple of little things happen on the screen. Up on my view setting here you'll see it's got the little star beside the view. Now if I push the down arrow it gives me the option to save as. So I'm just going to save as. I'm just going to call this approved. I'm going to create a public view. 
And this view is now going to show just approved items, but if I go back to my all items view, which is the default on this library, you'll see I see the archived file. So if I go back down here, change another one, the same method, change this one's status from approved to draft, for instance, and then click back out of there. You'll see I can see all of these items in the library, but if I change to um, my approved only document 6 should drop out of the view. So now I just see uh, just, oh, in fact, actually what I've done there is you'll have noticed that that filter I'd saved, uh, if we go and edit the, edit the view, you'll see the filter actually shows the draft item because it's just saying, don't show me archived items. So if I look down here, you'll see the status on this view is equal to approved, uh, which is interesting because that one is equal to draft and it's not showing. Oh, here we are. It's just maybe caching. Okay, so now we've got the, the, the default value, uh, that list showing just the, what are those items. I um, can also set an, uh, an alert on this library. Alerts are really simple things to do, but very popular. So if I go alert me from the ellipsis here, um, this becomes the subject line of my email. So I can just say my documents view, and then I can specify what types of changes to alert on. So any changes, new items, existing items, etc. And then I can also filter on a variety of things here and then determine when that is going to notify me um, instantly, which is within a few minutes, uh, daily or weekly. And you can specify the time for the daily or weekly options here as to when that actually goes. Um, and that will send an email notification giving you an update whenever anything in this library changes. Really good if you need to keep track of, um, of things. Now I can also from here turn this into a team. So if I go into Microsoft Teams for a moment, You'll see in my Microsoft Teams here, I've got the SharePoint and Office 365 Knowledge Team, uh, but no team called SK Demo. So the site's called SK Demo, so just jump back into my site. Click down here to create a team, and it's going to create a team. Now, in behind SharePoint and Microsoft Teams is Office Groups. So the Office Group determines who the owner of the group is, who the members of the group are, and who the visitors to that group are. So who can see documents, or oh, read and read only mode, a visitor who can edit documents, which is a member, and who can make changes to the site or the entire structure, which is the owner of the site. If I jump back over into Teams, you'll see my, uh, my demo site has appeared here, and you'll see that it's got a folder called General. If we go into General, and look at Files, you'll notice that it doesn't have those documents we uploaded. Okay, jump back into SharePoint, the reason is, if we go to our All Items view, now remember we're in the default document library, if we go to our All Items view here, you'll see now there's a folder called General. If I decide to move this file, so I can go into the app, I can go Move to the current library, General, Move, Document 2 is now in that channel. So if I go back into Teams, and if I wait for a moment, there we go to posts, back into the team files tab. Within a, within a minute, here we go, our documents just appear, appeared in here and you'll see it's got the approval status uh, because Teams now supports the metadata and so on as well. So this is a new feature that's just come in. So I can jump backwards and forwards between um, Teams and SharePoint. And if, I'm in, if I started from the Teams side, I just go to the files tab and click open in SharePoint to take me back through to the SharePoint team site. So I've just done that, and this is what it does. It takes us into the team site, into the ch general channel on that tab. So you'll notice the URL at the top here is um, basically directs me in directly into that particular channel. Um, a few other things we can do. Uh, we can do things like create a list. So uh, within our team site, I'll go back to here. Um, if we click onto the cog again, um, and from here we have an option called site content. If we look at the site content, you'll notice a whole bunch of things like document libraries, our templates and so on. These are the out of the box features. I've got Power BI in my environment, so I also get Power BI app. If I went in here and went new, app, this will allow me to create an additional uh, app based on a, very, a variety of templates and things that you have installed in your environment here. So I'm gonna create a, um, a task list for instance. This is based on the classic SharePoint tasks, and I'll create that. 
And what that's going to do is it's going to create in my site a task list. And when I click into that task list, it will let me track things. Now this is a classic mode feature, so this is an old style SharePoint. If you wanted to do this in modern SharePoint, the best way to do it is actually create a new list. So the same process, add an app. And this time, if we go to custom list, um, the custom list, we'll call this one here, um, um, my list. We'll create that. What that'll do is create us a default modern list type in my list and you'll see this is in the modern SharePoint style. Now the reason why that task list shows in classic style is that Microsoft in behind the scenes still has the classic functionality from your old style SharePoint lists. Um, you can also uh, add columns in the same way that we did before. So just go in here so I can add in a date column. So uh, start date for example um, and then again using the quick edit functionality um, I can um, bulk load data in or bulk edit and so on, so I can carry on creating columns in here. Um, I can also uh, customise the list using Power Apps or set an automation up using Power Automate by clicking the Flow option here. This is now available in both libraries and lists. So that's really a quick walk around some of the features of modern SharePoint sites. Um, one question that people often ask is how do these relate back to a hub? So I'm just going to bring up a slide uh, just to demonstrate the, uh, the um, functionality so or how it's structured so in this case here I've got a hub site and the hub site is connected to a series of teams uh, each of these team sites so admin finance production sales and QA are all sites within those I've got a series of document libraries for different types of content um, these sites are connected to an office group so each this, so the reason why we're using a site here is because we can control the permissions easily at this level we can, if we want to, also set permissions at the library level. I wouldn't go any deeper than that um, unless you've got a very special case. Um, and there are a few around things like um, clients, for example, if you had client folders. Now, connecting these sites to the hub means that they would share common navigation, a common theme, and search scope. And we can also use web parts like the highlighted content web part to roll up content created in these sites to the top. So, for example, a news article created by the sales team could be published to the hub site for everybody in the organisation to see. That's a really quick walkthrough of some of the functionality that you have in modern SharePoint. I um, hope you found that interesting. Um, please check my video channel out, our YouTube channel out. I've got a number of other videos related to this, um, including hub sites and using some of the things like approval processes, again, based on these types of document libraries. Um, enjoy, and um, I'll think of a topic for a new one soon.